In this screencast, I'm going to show you how to use MongoDB in your Node.js applications using the MongoJS module. For those of you who may not be familiar with it, MongoDB is a database, but in the NoSQL family of databases, which means it's not a traditional relational database. MongoDB is actually what's known as a document-oriented database. This means it stores structured data as JSON-like documents with dynamic schemas, instead of storing data in tables with rigid schemas, as relational databases do. Basically, you pass it JSON objects, and it stores them easily, without predefining the schema. This data flexibility, in addition to the great features it has such as auto sharding, full index support, and MapReduce, have made MongoDB a popular storage choice. The fact that it takes JSON data directly makes it ideal for Node.js. Let's check it out. First, make sure you have MongoDB installed. I won't go through the installation in detail here, but you can download distributions for your OS at mongodb.org slash downloads. They maintain a number of OS specific installation packages. Alternatively, you can use the package manager for your platform. I'm working in OS X, so I would use Homebrew or Macports if I didn't already have it installed. Once you've installed MongoDB, make sure it's running. Mine isn't, so I'll just start it up at the command line by launching the MongoD service. Now, let's start a new node app. I'm already in my code directory, so I can just fire up an editor. The first thing we'll have to know how to do to work with MongoJS is to connect to the local MongoDB instance using the module. MongoJS is a very simple wrapper to the MongoDB driver for Node. It mimics the actual MongoDB API very closely, allowing you to issue the same commands you could issue at the MongoDB terminal within your Node.js code. If you don't have the MongoJS module, go ahead and grab it from NPM. There we go. Onto the code. As with all Node.js modules, we need to require the MongoJS module and assign it to an object. In this case, we can also append the connect command to the require statement. To connect to our database, we're going to need to specify two things. The URL of the database and the collections we intend to query. Collections in MongoDB can be thought of as analogous to tables in relational databases. There are specific sets of like data. For example, I'm going to specify a collection called users here, since I'll be demonstrating functionality by manipulating user objects within our database. We specify collections in a list because we could specify more than one if we wanted to. I'm also going to specify the URL. The syntax is IP slash database name. I'm naming my database Mongo app, but you can name it whatever you want. And of course, the address of my database for now is localhost. Now looking at this, I could reduce all of this connect logic to a single line by declaring the DB URL and the collections inline. This long form is a little more illustrative, but I'll toss the short form in a comment. Now, we need objects to put into MongoDB. For that, we need to make a data model. In JavaScript, object types are declared as functions. Knowing this, I'll create a user object model. Note the function syntax and that I've effectively given our user object a constructor taking in first name, last name, and email. I'm going to keep this object type simple and only include these attributes. For reference, in JSON notation, this user object would look like this. Now let's take a minute away from the code to work in the MongoDB terminal to see how MongoDB commands work in their native environment. Invoking the Mongo executable I can enter the Mongo shell from the command line. 
notice that it says it's connected me to a database named test, which is the default. The Mongo app database doesn't exist yet because we haven't created it. However, I can exit out of this terminal and connect to MongoDB telling it I would like to connect to the Mongo app database. When I do this, it will actually create the database for me on the fly. From the Mongo terminal, I can type the help command to see a full list of commands in MongoDB. Not a long list, but the API takes a little getting used to. One of the first things I'd like to show you is the show DBs command, which will give us a list of all the databases. Note, there's our Mongo app DB. It was created when we connected. Note this fact that databases are created on the fly, because a typo in your connect code can cause some unexpected databases to be created and some very strange application bugs when data is saved to the wrong database. In MongoDB, you operate on a database by issuing a command to a specific collection. You can list all collections in your current DB using the show collections command. Notice that we haven't created any collections yet. If we wanted to add the user we specified earlier in the code, for example, to a collection named users, we could run the following command, db.users.save, and then pass in the user object in JSON format that we'd like to save. Let's pass in our example user from the code. Now, if we issue a show collections command, we should see the users collection. If we want to see the objects in the users collection, we can use a find command in the same fashion as we did for save, db.users.find. An empty find command will return all objects in the collection. Notice our user object is in there, looking exactly as we passed it in, except for the addition of an ID, which Mongo adds when it creates an object. Now, let's remove this collection so we can try all this from Node.js. Same syntax, db.users.drop. It returns true to let us know it's dropped the collection, and if we look for it, no longer present. Now, let's go back to the code. First, we're going to need to create a user object using our user object model. Here I've created the object equivalent to the user we just created in the database a moment ago. With the MongoJS module, we can use the exact same notation we just used in the MongoDB shell to save this user to the database. In this case, we'll pass the user object we've created into the save method instead of writing out the JSON object manually to save a little bit of space. The only difference for us here is that in proper Node.js style, we're going to provide a closure as a callback function from the db users save method. This callback will receive two arguments, a copy of any error that was thrown while executing the operation, and a copy of the object saved to the db. This object, which I've named saved user, will be identical to the object we passed into the db user save method, except for the unique ID that Mongo has added to the JSON object. Now I'm just going to add a small amount of reporting logic to our callback so we can know what happened. In this case, if we get an error passed in, or if the user object returned as null, I'll log an error message to the console. If not, I'll print out a confirmation message to the console letting us know that the user has been saved. Now, let's save this and execute the code from the command line. Excellent. Since we didn't see any errors, we got our user save success message. Now, my node app isn't terminating itself, so I have to use control C to get out. An important point to note, I could go back over here and issue a process.exit command 
at the end, thereby removing the need to control C. However, when I execute this, I won't see anything at the console. Remember, we're working in Node.js, so that db user save command was asynchronous, meaning we got to the process exit command and exited the application before the callback came back in from our user save command. So for now, I'm going to remove that and stick with having to control C to end my process every time. Now, let's explore a bit more of the MongoDB API using our MongoJS module. We've successfully saved our user, and now let's find it in the database. This will require a DB users find command, as we saw at the Mongo show earlier. Now this is the same basic concept as our save command. We're invoking an operation on the users collection of our database. This time we're using the find operation and again providing a closure as a callback. The find method should pass our callback an error or a list of users matching the query. Here I'll print an error if we get no users or if an actual error is thrown. And if not, I'll print the list of users by iterating through the users object using a for each loop. I'll comment out my save code and then execute the application again. Notice that we found more than one user. This is because I've called this code more than once, and we haven't done anything to stop duplicates from entering the system. Unless we tell it otherwise, MongoDB will allow us to add two identical objects. Of course, it'll give them each a unique ID, so that they're technically unique within the database. However, this is probably not the behavior we want for our application. We can constrain this by ensuring a unique index on the email field of our objects. Back to the code. There. Now, we'll get an error on this command if duplicate objects in our database already exist, because we're telling it to ensure uniqueness on email. So, we have to remove the users before we can test this out. We can remove objects using the remove command. I'll just comment out both the save and find commands, so we can delete all users before adding the index. Note that I'm doing something a little different here. Instead of passing a full object into my remove method, I'm just passing a single field from the object and its value. This will search for all objects in the user's collection that match. In this case, all users with the email address philip at fry.com. You can do the same thing in your find commands. Now, I've run my code. Now let's jump back into the Mongo terminal real quick. to make sure all the users are gone. Okay, our find command issues no users, meaning we've erased all users within the users collection. Now, let's go back to the code. Uncomment the save and find commands and copy the save command. With a different user, but with the exact same data so that we try to save the same user twice. Okay, running the app. Note we didn't get any error messages. This is actually a little bit of strange behavior from the MongoJS module. It won't throw an error on the save command if it's unable to save the user. But if we go into the Mongo shell, we should see that there's only one user in the users table. Okay, we've succeeded here. There's only one instance of our Philip Fry user in the database. Keep in mind the fact that our code didn't throw any errors trying to save the second user, as that could lead to bugs because of the unexpected behavior when you're programming using this module. That's it for now. In the next screencast, I'll go over some more advanced MongoJS queries that'll be useful in your Node applications. I'll see you then.